Welcome back everybody to another very, very hot Lord Duckman production. <laughs> We're back with go-kart stuff today, and I haven't done any go-kart stuff probably in, I don't know, six, seven, eight weeks. Probably since last spring. And the reason why is because it's been so damned hot down here. It's just been incredible. Over 100 degrees just most of the summer through July, August, and finally the beginning of September we finally caught a break. It's actually only like 95 out here right now with 100% humidity, which makes my clothes wet. I've only been out here for a few minutes gathering tools and I'm already soaked through my clothes, but that's just the way it goes. Behind me here is my KT196. You might remember this thing. We're going to do a little work on it today. We're going to try to downgrade the front wheels because you remember I upgraded them, but this upgrade that's on here is for the future. It's not going to be part of the speed contest which is coming up. And now that it's cooled down a little bit, yeah, cool, 95 degrees and cool, now we're actually going to finally get around to doing that speed contest. If you're interested in the speed contest, don't leave your speed guesses down here. Head on over to the other video. Link's down below in the video description. Leave your speed up there. We're going to gather everybody up. We're going to give out some prizes. So anyways, this is the project. This is it here. I got my little sipper, which is almost gone. Hmm. Hot day. I don't feel bad. <laughs> So you know what the drill is. Licky, like, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a new video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And if you need any particular parts for your mowers or other devices, check out the HIPAA store. And what does the HIPAA store do? Well, they sell parts for the top leading brands of mowers, chainsaws, generators, weed whackers, and even sell some parts for go-karts. This is hurricane season, folks. For those of you that live here in Florida, along the Gulf Coast, or anywhere on the Atlantic, you know to be ready before the storm hits. Get those chainsaws and generators running and make sure you have the spare parts for when you need them. So far, I've been ready over here, but thankfully the storms have been missing my area. But all it takes is one good surprise storm to knock us back to the Stone Age. Will you be ready? Get those numbers off your machine, and if you need help identifying your engine, I'll even help you. That's right, the Duckman will be there to support you too. Then together, we'll check out the HIPAA store by following the affiliate link down below in the video description, because when you support HIPAA, you're also supporting my video creation on this YouTube channel. Special thanks again to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video. <laughs> All right, you folks know this KT196 go-kart. This is the one that I cut about 10 and a half inches out of and lengthened it so that way I could fit in it because these are intended for children and well, I'm kind of a big children, so the only way I could get into the thing comfortably was to make it bigger. And then you may remember after that, we upgraded the engine from the 196cc to a Predator 301, which is what you see on here. That Predator 301 is uh, roughly eight horsepower, probably a little bit more because I've put this carburetor on and I've also deleted the governor on it so it's got a little more give than it used to but this CVT that you see on here has a um, maximum theoretical limit of about eight horsepower so we're right on the edge of this thing failing and what happens is typically when I go out I mean I just play with this thing once and I blow out a belt about once a day doesn't take long a belt is gone in a day done finished a lot of folks said hey why don't you upgrade to a 40 series so we're going to not in this video but this is coming up I got this thing for a song and a dance. I kid you not, these things nowadays, if you want a good one, you're looking at around $300, maybe $350. Not cheap anymore. These are still relatively cheap. A China one you can get for about $60, $70. You want to get a good uh, Comet branded one, you're a little over $100. But these things are insane. These are not cheap at all. And this actually is a China one, because I don't see the Comet logos on it. Comet one's usually much darker in color, they're like a, a black metallic color. But anyway, these are probably China, so that's fine. I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. But anyway, I got this thing for next to nothing. I happened to find it up on Marketplace. Somebody was desperate for a little bit of money. He had some kids, a wife. His family's getting a little bigger. He just quit his job because he's moving on to some better things in his life, and he's just needed some coin. So when it came time to get this, as well as a whole bunch of other go-kart parts, all brand new, and it, I'm not even going to tell you what the prices that I got this stuff for because it was so ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. When I went over there, he even said to me, he says, you can make any offer you want. He says, I'll take just about anything you give me. And I said, dude, I said, I know what I'm getting here. I said, I'll give you your asking price. I'm not going to beat you up. 
And right about then his phone started chiming like crazy and he opened it up and sure enough, there's more people hitting him on Marketplace that were trying to cut his price in half and everything else. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that to you. I know what these things cost. I know what you're asking for. And if that's how much money you need, I will give that to you. And he was overjoyed. He was just so happy because he said the thing had been for sale as well as the other parts for a couple weeks or something. And all he had was just people jerking him around. So again, I can relate. <laughs> Every time I sell shit on Marketplace, the same kind of thing happens too. Anyway, this is going on here. We are going to have some clearance issues with the rear bumper, so I'm probably going to have to either move that or I'm going to have to relocate the engine and push it forwards a little bit. I would like to solid mount the engine and run a jack shaft to the frame and then back this way, so that way none of the uh, weight is unsprung weight because the engine sits on the axle. It's not sprung at all. I'd rather have it up and above. It just seems to make more sense to me that way, and it probably will perform a little bit better especially going over the bumps because this thing likes to stall. And you know why? Because the fuel in the bowl cavitates. When this thing starts shaking, that fuel starts sloshing, the engine starts stalling. Whenever I go over a lot of bumps or I'm pushing really hard into a turn or something, it's, it's, it's splashing around way too much and it causes the engine to quit. But anyway, what we're here today to do, for starters, is to take these front wheels and spindles off, which is my upgrade that's coming. This is the thing we're putting back on later. To go back to the stock ones, because this is what I promised everybody that, that entered in a speed contest. So we don't want to screw anybody over and, you know, skew the results because I put the wrong wheels on. Putting everything back to the stock configuration. It also means I can take it back out to Ranchero 302 Me's house, and we can have some more fun coming up this fall before we do the speed contest. Uh, speed contest, I'm going to guess it'll happen sometime between October... Uh, let's say Halloween and Thanksgiving, somewhere between there, maybe even a little sooner than that. But that's like the optimal time for weather for me to take these things out and actually have a little fun and not sweat my damn nuts off. Whew. Anyway, we're going to clean this thing up today. I'm going to get it off this trailer. This trailer actually belongs in that hole. And then I'd also like to put away some of my yard equipment here, some of these mowers and things that I've gotten running recently. There's just too much stuff in the yard. It's a little hard to navigate. I want to put things away. I mean, I've got these sheds. i got a little space in them. There's a shed behind those trees over there. I could put the cart away back where it belongs. It's been outside in the rain, and let's just say it's, uh, the rain's not been good to it because I didn't paint this thing yet. But that's not a big deal. We can always sandblast it and hit it later. But anyway, let's hop to it and put those wheels and spindles back on and downgrade this thing back to where it's supposed to be, put some air in it. Hell, we might even just go take it out for a little spin. I think that'll be fun, so let's hit it. All right, let's bring this cart up this little ramp here. Ah. Ah. Oh, the wheels are chalked up in the back. I forgot about that. Let me get that out of here. Also doesn't help that we got flats. Friggin' cart. It's sitting so long. These tires are still on the rims. Last time they came off the rims. Alright, start by bringing this cart up this thing. Hopefully these 2x4s hold. They don't feel too good. Good. And now, of course, you got unruly roosters who want to make noise. Even though I already put Biddy inside, because he's the really obnoxious one. But Biddy's son, Peanut, is starting to scream down there. Alright. Get this all out of here. Alright, here we go. I was wondering if these nuts were even going to come out because they've been sitting in the weather. Tie rod end out. Put our washer back on there. And we got another nut underneath. Oh, it's a different size too. Of course it is, right? It's been a little while since I worked on this, so I forgot. Looks like it's a 19 and I don't have a 19 out here. Well, we'll be right back. And the one underneath turned out to be a 19. Of course it is, right? Yeah, everything's gotta be a different size. Nothing like jerking around the duck, man. <laughs> All right, this spindle should just pull right out of here. There we go. Then I'll put these nuts on here so I don't lose them. All right. Put our little spindles back on. These are one of the uh, weak points of these KT196 go-karts 
these things the ball joints pop out of them the stubs will snap snap off of them I saw somebody say online he can get some heavy-duty ones and I mean, I've shopped for them and I never found heavy-duty ones so that's the reason why I made some that's right the duck man makes stuff that he can't buy All right. of course now peanuts screaming he was being good before but now he's gonna be an ass birds for you birds are always got to give you their opinion they'll be quiet in a minute otherwise I'm gonna go over there and kick his ass I might need a wrench for that. Yeah, I think so. All right, be right back. The squirrels in the back here are cutting down those unripe pine cones. If you've never experienced those before, or hell, if you've been hit by one before, you know. They're hard as a rock and they heavy as a brick, and they're full of spines. So they probably, if they hit you in the right spot in the head, could do you some real damage. These are supposed to have a little uh, standoff on it. Or is it? No, maybe not. Thought I had something I put on there for that. Right. Now these things, it's Chinese metal that these things are made from here. Incredibly soft. I gotta be careful on the threads. Once it starts to snug up, just stop. All right, here it is. You got one spindle. Look at that! Whoa! All right, nut off of there. Put just a little bit of grease on the stub. All right, and this wheel is the wrong one. The duck man, how'd you know it was the wrong one? The only reason why is because these treads are an arrow and the top of them is supposed to face forward. Why is that? Well, it has to do with uh, mud and water shedding. Sometimes if you're in a real soft, muddy environment, you can actually put the tires on better and you might get better grip. Okay. Here's our little gogi disc. This is what allows this rubber gogi to snap on. So it goes over here like this. I think it goes on the other way though. I don't remember which way this goes. Let's try it that way. Yeah, it looks right. Okay. I don't know how much of that you guys even saw, because it looks like I got a bad camera angle. There we go. And then we've got a little cotter pin to slide in there. We'll put that in too. There it is. Done. There you go. This is not too unlike any automobile. And the rubber gogi goes over that disc. And that seals it all up. Fantastic. All right, we got one wheel. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And we're starting on the bottom here. There we go. Let's get one on the top. Don't know why they made them two different sizes, but one's an 18 and one's a 19. 
was kind of the problem I was worried about there, that these ball joint would start spinning. That's exactly what it just did. Alright, lastly, need to remove the tie rod end. That I never made tight. Because it was strictly experimental. Come on, let go. Okay. There it goes. Yeah. Off it comes. Okay. Ah! We're drifting! Hey, not sure how much of that video we might have lost. Because <laughs> the camera did start off to one side while I wasn't watching the camera. And anyway. Our spindle back in. There should be another washer on this. I probably should go look for it. Should be another one on the bottom too, and it looks like I'm short on washers for some reason. Alright, we'll be right back. Alright, we got some washers. Here we go. That will stop the nut from pulling through the hole on these A-arms. The holes are widened a little bit for the bigger spindles. Should be effective enough to get a couple runs out of this without having to worry about anything exploding, but that's the way we got it set up, so. Hey, there I go. Everything falls on the ground. <clears throat> Few people rag on me because I work over pine needles. You're gonna lose everything. Well, not if you watch where it falls. Or better yet, don't drop anything. <laughs> okay. Try that again. Good. All right. Tie rod in goes in here. don't remember what nut that is that goes on that one. Is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Ding, ding, ding. That's the one. on that to tighten that effectively. Actually it's tight. That's good. Here we go. We have our steering rack back. Alright, this comes off. A little bit of grease. On goes out of wheel. Over on this side, I'm missing my gogi washer. I don't know where the hell that went. That's okay. We'll just come back to that later. The right size it is.
Some people say, you're not supposed to reuse a cotter pin. Ah, you reuse them all the time. Nobody's dying here. <laughs> this one does have a little bit of a bend in it, which makes it harder to reuse, but I'll get it in there. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Now, I haven't started this thing in a couple months. Looks like the run switch is, yeah, it's already on. Choke is on. Got fuel in the tank. Mm, it don't smell too good. It does smell terrible, but it don't smell too good. Okay. I think we're good as far as everything on here. Looks like it's set up properly without moving anything. This should get us started. Oh, helps if the fuel switch is turned on, right? <laughs> you saw the duck man do a dumb. Wow, flowing a lot. That carburetor was dry. But you know what? I always run these things dry before I leave them parked. It's a no-no to leave anything with gas in it. All right, try it again. It won't idle properly. I have to have the choke on and I have to have the idle screw wound in. Otherwise, that's the best it'll do. And of course, with the choke on, when you try to open the throttle, it bogs. So, there's definitely something in the uh, carburetor. I'm going to suggest it's probably in the low, low speed mixture circuit. So, there's a little jet in there and emulsification tube and, you know, same old stuff you see in any other carburetor. I'll take it apart and clean it out. Should be good after that. All right, well, we're going to pull the carburetor bottom off of there in just a second. You may notice the license plate here is off. My birthday is in a, oh, a week or so, so I'm going to need to renew that before my birthday because that's the Florida birthday tax. Everybody's vehicle registration expires on their birthday here in Florida. So happy birthday from Florida. Anyway, I'll be taking care of that this week. Uh, let's see. That needs to also be welded back on. This um, broke off. When I was at uh, on the way back from Dad's house one time with the trailer all loaded down, and I used a bunch of zip ties or something, I managed to hold it securely. It was a floppy mess, but it was not going to go anywhere. <laughs> anyway, I made it home, and it was pretty good for a while, and I had forgotten I needed to fix it. So anyway, it needs to be welded. That's another thing i got to do. It may or may not happen today. Doubt it. Here's the um, rear wheels that I'd like to upgrade to, or ones like it anyway. Hell of a difference from what's already on here. There we go. You see, <laughs> I have to change the sprockets and the gear ratio and all that stuff. Put it in perspective, that's what it's kind of going to look like when it's on there. It will raise the uh, ride height a little bit too. I will probably be pulling the swing arm out of this and using the axles and some of the other components, which are pretty close of a match to this, but not exact. Pretty close. Probably going to have to do a little machining, maybe make some custom bearing races or something. and. Uh, Get that to fit on there so I can upgrade it to the bigger axle with the bigger wheels. And as I said, I'd like to hard mount that engine if at all possible. What I would probably do is I would build some down tubes that come uh, off the basket on the back here, which may or may not be strong enough. I guess I'll have to look at that. That hoop down to the frame here, allow the engine to slot into it. And then I would run the sprocket off of the um, CVT forwards to a jack shaft which then goes down to the axle that's the way I would set it up and I think that would be better just overall I think everything would just be snugger tighter uh, less floppy because this whole apparatus here it's uh it's not exactly the tightest thing 
and it has once again all that unsprung weight this engine weight is all sitting on the axle instead of sitting you know above the shocks that makes the suspension act a little weird and i think uh would just have a better ride overall if i hard mounted the engine might vibrate more though <laughs> but it's a go-kart right yeah all right here's that cvt the 40 series i was talking about and this is the belt from it you see that 30 series belt look how weak that thing looks by comparison these are also double tapered they're tapered on both sides whereas the uh, 30 series is only tapered on the outside the inside is flat so this should give it a lot more grip and these things i think they said are capable up to 15 horsepower from 8 to 15 so it should be good should be good on this engine which starts out at 8 with a few of the upgrades i got on i might get it close to 15 i doubt it would go over i mean maybe if i really push it if i want to put in the cam and a few other things we'll talk about that stuff in a way distant future but for now i just want to get this thing back together okay well i guess we gotta put air in the tires i want to get this thing offloaded off the trailer and i want to get it shoved back into the shed where it belongs that way i can move forward with the rest of the day and get all this crap moved out of here so that way i can actually take the cart and get it out of the yard if i wanted to man there's just so much stuff back here i hear you shut up over there all right every single tire on here is flat which didn't surprise me because they all had a slow leak anyway full 20 psi should be lower than that but with somebody of my weight it gets a really flat bottom on it doesn't roll very well so i overpressure them just a little bit okay i get this idle jet out of here there it is I don't know if you can see through it, but I can't see through it. All right, we'll clean that out. That was definitely part of the problem here. All right, we're fixed. Just in time to hear thundering outside here again. The sky has looked pretty menacing most of the day, off in that direction. Boy, this gas smells like crap. Even though I put this gas in here pretty recently, it smells like garbage already. But then again, this tank, sits here in the sun most of the day and that causes all the volatiles to evaporate out of it so it's never very good to have gas that's been heated one of the good reasons to store it underground which they do at gas stations but that gets consumed pretty quickly though it doesn't really stay there for any length of time right. you know I'm an idiot I probably should have cleaned the main jet too but Oh well. <laughs> I already started to put it back together. I'm distracted here talking about the weather. Okay, just snug this up. And I gotta fix my idle mixture screw because I know it's it's wrong. I loosened the way the hell out there and I think it's only gotta be about like a half a turn or one turn or something. It doesn't need very much. I give it one turn. All right, let us turn our fuel back on. Right here, you can hear the ducklings inside. <laughs> I'll show them to you guys before we end this video. All right, fuel is, is it flowing? I didn't see any bubbles. All right, we're gonna assume it is. All right, is everything switched on? We are, choke is on. Let's see if she starts. Better back off that idle screw a little bit too, because it might just take off and go forward. Remember, we tightened that earlier. What the hell's going on here? Oh, it's a flathead! Old style. All right. And I'll lift this up just a little bit so I can modulate it if we need to.
problem, although I probably should have run it dry. So it's just going to go back in the shed. Well, you know, like I said, we might take it for a ride. All right, let's get this 40 series clutch and stuff out of the way. I had it up over here. I was taking some measurements in between video segments. This thing is big and heavy. Like, this is some serious parts here. All right. Storm crap was just kind of sitting there for a number of hours. But it's all dark, 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 dark over that way. Blue skies over here. But this is swelling up and now well, it's coming this way. We might start hearing some booming in this video. But meanwhile, we still got sunlight. So let's see how much we can get done. All right. Let's pull this sucker off the trailer. So the trailer is going to get backwards. Kind of a <laughs> side effect. This is a shed that Rob gave me. He's getting scrapped. Make sure we got enough room in here, and it looks like we do. Not too much in here has changed. Doodle bastard needs to shift over just a little bit. The battery on this uh, late last uh, winter, early spring. I had this on the trailer, I was bringing it to David's house to have some fun, and it fell down. And the battery came out, it wasn't strapped in well enough, and it ripped all the wires off the battery terminals. Kind of pissed me off. And as if that wasn't enough, then it sprang a gas tank leak somewhere up in here through one of the welds. So I'm going to have to pull the tank back out and reseal it another time. And this over here is a big old secret. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but uh, that's got its own video that I've been shooting for two years. It still hasn't finished yet, but we'll do it. It'll come up soon. <laughs> anyway, that's where the old dude, um, that's where the old KT is going to go, right in there. And man, that storm ain't looking any better. It's tiny, not very big. I can see the sun on the other side of it now, but uh, we're going to get something. We're going to get something. Let's see if we can get this thing inside before it happens. Like I said, this is that first breeze before it starts raining. About to start coming down. Throw my pants. <laughs> oh, pants. <laughs> All right. Hey. Oh, damn door. We gotta fix that. It's a free shed. A little less than perfect, but I'll get it. You better go inside, Cheeky. It's about to rain on you. Everybody better go back in. See, all the chickens are starting to come around. Come on. Go ahead, go in. Before it rains on you, go. You know better. Get in there. Go in the house. Go ahead. All the girls go in the house. Come on. Come on. Going the wrong way, monster. Come on, get out of there. Let's go. Come on. Come in the house. Go in the house with all the girls. Hey, get in there. Come on, go in the house. Boomer, what are you doing? You wanna go in that house? That's the wrong house, but okay. Not belong in there. Oh, Cheeky. Oh, Cheeky's out. <laughs> Put you in there. Go ahead, get in there. Yeah, well, your water's all shitty. Come here, Cheekster. Go ahead, go in your house. There you go. Yeah. Close them all in. You want to come out? There. I'll put you in the bigger house with your mom. You two don't fight, so it's okay. How about you? You want to come out of there too? No? You shook your head no. Okay. Alright, everybody's safe. All right, we got the trailer moved to where it's supposed to be, and underneath it, look what I found. <laughs> Still warm too, so it's fresh. I wonder if there's any more under here. Eh, probably not. Nope. Okay, I shut off the camera. I found another egg. <laughs> there actually was two under there. Well, good. Okay. Generators and Mojobs need homes. Some of Rob's crap is around here, too. This thing. Actually, David was asking for one of those. Hmm. Let's see if he still wants it. 
All right, just started raining, so we're gonna make the end of this video short. There's your 30 series belt. There's your 40 series belt. I mean, look at the difference in size here. Here's your 30 series CVT cover. This is actually the one off the KT196, so it's a little bit bigger because it accommodates the jack shaft also. This is your 40 series cover. I mean, look, massive difference in size. So, yeah, that's all getting installed on that 301 engine because these belts, they don't last. They get eaten up. You don't believe me? Look at that. Or look at that. <laughs> yes, this was a 30 series belt. This one was kind of still pushing, but wasn't doing too good of a job. Anyway, we're wrapping up because it's effectively raining, yes. However, I did a good job over here. I'm gonna take that cart out for a ride, but that ain't gonna happen now, but we now have a through path. All that debris and stuff that was over there is all now put away. No longer is anything exposed to the weather. I'm happy for that, everything's put inside. I'll gather up my belts here and my good cover. KT196 covers crap. Bring those back inside and we'll wrap up this video. Oh, I promised you guys to see the babies. There's the babies. Look at them. Oh. Yep, I'm in. It's raining outside, guys. It's raining. Yep, it's raining out. Uh -huh. They're good babies. Yes, they are. Very, very good babies. I just burned my arm on your heat lamp when I brought you out here. Yes, it did. <laughs> they sure have gotten big. I mean, look at them compared to my hand. Before I could put the two of them in the palm of my hand and close it, and they would disappear. But I couldn't do that now if I wanted to. They sure like to be snuggled, though. Look, see? There you go, good baby. And this is a little crooked headed one. Still don't know boys or girls. Hoping girls, still hoping. Still hoping. But the one with the straight head, this one here. Boy, you're a snuggly little one. Look at you. This one's a little bit bigger. Possibility this one could be the boy. Again, still hoping for girls, but I guess we'll see in time. And you're looking up at me with that little eye. That little crooked head. That's the reason why I grabbed you. Because you're extra special. Yep. And I hate calling this one Skeeter 2.0 or Skeeter Reincarnated because that doesn't give Skeeter any respect. Skeeter was her own thing and nobody will ever be like Skeeter. I'm hoping a little Skeeter might be in there somewhere, but no, this is this is not Skeeter. No, you're a sweet baby all your own. Yes, you are. And I hope you and I get along and bond and I hope you're with me for many, many years. I will protect you and I will love you and I will feed you and I will take care of you. Yeah, because you're my little baby. All right, well, I guess that's all for today, guys. So, like, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingo bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Duck Shit down there for all of my different social media links. And uh, we'll be back before too long. Thanks for watching. <laughs>